students and welcome to the video solutions of ANTS FT2 botany section. Starting with question number 101, mosses are attached to substratum by. So what we know about mosses is that they are the higher groups of bryophytes. So because bryophytes mein abhi tak proper body differentiation start nahi hua hai. They do not have true root stems or leaves. But what do they have is they have root like, stem like leaf like structures so substratum may attach honey ke liye support provide karne ke liye they are going to require rhizoids which are considered to be root like structures so going by that question number 101 answer should be option a rhizoids for question number 102 again it's from plant kingdom in the life cycle of mosses, the gametophyte has two stages A and B. These stages can be called. So, gametophyte stage is in mosses ke case. Mein. First, we have the haploid spore. This spore, upon germination, what is it doing? First, it is a very reduced, almost filamentous juvenile stage. So, this reduced reduced juvenile filamentous stage is what we are saying. Protonema. So going by that, stage A is going to be protonema. Yahi protonema mosses ke case mein aage ja ke kya bana raha hai? Ye ek leaf like, stem like and root like structures bana raha hai. So the second stage that we are getting, this is considered to be the adult leafy stage. So that is stage B. So going by that, stage A is protonema, stage B is leafy stage. Question number 102, the correct answer is option B. Question number 103 is from the chapter Morphology of Flowering Plants. The, which floral family has 9 plus 1 arrangement of anthers in androsium? So total 10 pe anthers or stamens are in the arrangement of androsium, mein, 9 plus 1, 9 together in one bunch, 1 separate. So this condition hai, this is what? This is diadelphous condition. So, this diadelphous condition hai, this is a characteristic property of the family Fabaceae. So, going by that, question number 103, the answer should be option B, Fabaceae. Question number 104, this is an assertion reason based question. Assertion in the state kiya hai that stems of some plants protect them from grazing animals so grazing animals se protect karne ke liye jo defensive structure yahan pe ban raha hai so what we require is we require some sharp pointy thing jo usko protect kar sakta hai so yes stems of some plants do allow them to provide protection from grazing animals so assertion seems to be true reason yahan pe bola gaya hai that axillary buds of stems of these plants, so assertion mein jin plants ki baat ho rahi hai, axillary buds of stems of these plants are modified into thorns. So when we study thorn modifications, what we know ki stem mein exactly ye wala jo position aa raha hai, this portion of the stem, this contains what? An axillary bud, to ye jo axil wala portion hai, yaha pe kya ban raha hai? Yaha pe formation ho raha hai, axillary bud ka. Generally, the axillary bud develops into what? It develops into the lateral branch. But if you see that this axillary bud will a sharp pointed structure, then it will this plant ko grazing animals se protection. Mil so this sharp pointed structure, this is nothing but thorn. Who is actually coming from the axillary bud? So going by that, reason also seems to be true. A point here is that this particular reason ki thorn protection de raha hai, how? Because the axillary bud modified into thorn, this is explaining the previous assertion. So reason is the correct explanation of the assertion. So going by that, question number 104, option A, that should be our answer. Question number 105, this is from the anatomy chapter. Yaha pe dicot stem ke layers mention hai, aur hume uske corresponding feature ke saath usko match karna hai. So hypodermis, this is marking the layer that is present just below the epidermis. So if we are the epidermis ko outermost layer, then the layer that is below the epidermis, this is the hypodermis. Because the dicot stem is said, so going by that, the dicot stem is hypodermis, ho hai, this is actually composed of what? 
कॉलेनकाइमा तो हाइपोडर्मिस इज गोइंग टू बी कॉलेनकाइमेटस ठीक हाइपोडर्मिस के नीचे क्या आ रहा है कॉर्टेक्स तो ये वाले जो सेल्स हो रहे हैं दिस पर्टिकुलर रीजन दिस इज नथिंग बट द कॉर्टेक्स कॉर्टिकल सेल्स ये किससे बना है दिस इज मेड अप ऑफ पैरनकाइमा राइट नंबर सी एंडोडर्मिस इन केस ऑफ दैट सेम डाइकॉट स्टेम ठीक हाइपोडर्मिस के नीचे यहां पे जो लेयर आएगा दिस पर्टिकुलर लेयर इज गोइंग टू बी द एंडोडर्मिस अगेन एंडोडर्मिस इज ऑल्सो मेड अप ऑफ पैरनकाइमा एंड स्पेसिफिकली इन द डाइकॉट स्टेम एंडोडर्मिस क्या कर रहा है एंडोडर्मिस इज इन्वॉल्व इन द स्टोरेज ऑफ स्टार्च hence we call it to be the starch sheath so going by that hypodermis is composed of collenchyma cortical layers are composed of parenchyma endodermis in a dicot stem can be called as starch sheath so if you mix it like that question number 105 option b a 1 b 2 c 3 that is going to be the correct answer question number 106 A conjoint and open vascular bundle will be observed in the transverse section of. The moment we see conjoint vascular bundle, ये पहला वाला term जैसे ही आ रहा है, what we can recall is that a conjoint vascular bundle is a property of stems. It is not observed in case of roots. So going by that, option A monocot root and option C dicot root. ये automatically cancel हो गया. अब स्पेसिफिकली यहां पे बोला गया है कॉन्जॉइंट एंड ओपन इन नेचर ओपन का मतलब क्या हो रहा है दैट यू हैव द प्रेजेंस ऑफ वैस्कुलर कैम्बियम तो जैसे ही हमने वैस्कुलर कैम्बियम के प्रेजेंस की बात की इट मींस दिस पर्टिकुलर स्टेम वुड बी एबल टू शो सेकेंडरी ग्रोथ एंड सेकेंडरी ग्रोथ वी नो इज अ प्रॉपर्टी ऑफ डाइकॉट प्लांट्स तो ऑप्शन बी जो मोनोकॉट स्टेम हो रहा है वो भी कैंसल आउट हो गया गिविंग एज द आइडिया दैट कॉन्जॉइंट Open condition. This is going to be a property of a dicot stem. So, for question number one zero six, answer should be option D. Now, question number one zero seven is a statement based, multi statement based question from cell. The points are related to ribosomes as an organelle. Ribosomes are non membrane bound. So, statement one जो हो रहा है, ये true है. Ribosomes do not contain any membrane around them. स्टेटमेंट टू बोल रहे हैं दैट दे आर एब्सेंट इन प्लास्टिड्स एंड माइटोकॉन्ड्रिया प्लास्टिड्स एंड माइटोकॉन्ड्रिया दे आर टू ऑर्गनल्स हु कंटेन देयर ओन राइबोसोम्स 70s राइबोसोम्स टू बी मोर प्रिसाइज तो इट इज अ कैरेक्टरिस्टिक प्रॉपर्टी ऑफ दोस टू ऑर्गनल्स तो गोइंग बाय दैट स्टेटमेंट टू सीम्स टू बी इनकरेक्ट स्टेटमेंट थ्री प्रेजेंट इन द साइटोप्लाज्म एंड आरआर तो प्रोकैरियोट्स हो या यूकैरियोट्स हो साइटोप्लाज्म में फ्रीली राइबोसोम्स हमेशा प्रेजेंट होंगे यूकैरियोटिक सेल्स में हमें क्या पता है दैट एंडोप्लाज्मिक रेटिकुलम राइबोसोम्स माइट बी एसोसिएटेड विद दैट दैट गिव्स अस द होल आइडिया ऑफ आरआर व्हिच इज रफ एंडोप्लाज्मिक रेटिकुलम सो स्टेटमेंट थ्री सीम्स टू बी करेक्ट स्टेटमेंट फोर टेक पार्ट इन प्रोटीन सिंथेसिस राइबोसोम्स आर कंसिडर्ड टू बी अ पार्ट ऑफ द प्रोटीन सिंथेसिस मशीनरी राइट सो स्टेटमेंट फोर दिस इज गोइंग टू बी करेक्ट सो स्टेटमेंट्स वन थ्री एंड फोर आर करेक्ट सो गोइंग बाय दैट ऑप्शन डी वन थ्री एंड फोर आर करेक्ट सो क्वेश्चन नंबर वन जीरो सेवन आवर आंसर इज ऑप्शन डी क्वेश्चन वन जीरो एट अ कॉमन फीचर ऑफ प्लांट सीव ट्यूब सेल्स एंड ममालियन इराइथ्रोसाइट्स इज बोथ सीव ट्यूब सेल्स एंड ममालियन इराइथ्रोसाइट्स दे आर इंटेग्रल पार्ट ऑफ द ऑर्गेनिज्म दे आर लिविंग सेल्स येट दीज टू सेट ऑफ सेल्स दे आर एक्चुअली ई न्यूक्लियट सेल्स and what we mean by e nucleate cells cells where the nucleus is going to be absent in its mature state so option d absence of nucleus that is going to be the correct answer for question number 108 question number 109 who discovered ribosomes as dense particles under the electron microscope so the discovery of micro, uh, ribosomes this is credited to george pallade that is why ribosomes were also called to be pallade particles so going by that question number 109 option a pallade question number 110 match the following nucleus division another name for the nucleus is carrion kinesis division so nucleus division is karyokinesis a4 
Similarly, cytoplasm division or actual cell division, cyto is cell, kinesis division. So, cytokinesis B2. Quiescent stage. So, quiescent stage is the state of inactivity where cell is not actively doing works related to division. This is another name for the alternative G0 phase. So, C1. D. Karyokinesis not followed by cytokinesis. Agar repeated rounds of nuclear division ho raha hai, lekin cell ya cytoplasm ka properly division nahi hua hai. So as a result of this, what we are going to get is a multinucleate condition, just mein nucleus bohat bar divide hua hai, but cell wo original ek hi cell hai, just mein further division nahi hua hai. So such a condition, a multinucleate condition created because of this phenomenon, that is called to be a synchysium. Syncytium number three. So, if you go by this particular code, option C, A4, B2, C1, D3. So, question number 110, the correct answer is option C. Now, question number 111, it's a very direct question. The cell cycle of mammalian cell and yeast respectively takes about. So, mammalian cell ke case mein, what we notice is the total cell cycle takes about 24 hours. Whereas, yeast cell ke case mein, the same cell cycle takes approximately 90 minutes. So, respectively, we have asked if you have to look at option A or D, it is 24 and 90, hai, but respectively, mammalian cell and yeast. So, 24 hours and 90 minutes. Question number 111, the correct answer is option A. 112. The X-shaped structures observed during diplotin are called. So, diplotin mein kya ho hai? The synaptonymal complex which is holding your chromosomes together would dissolve ho chuka hai. As a result of which, chromosomes are no longer associated with each other. Lekin, exactly jahan pe crossing over hua hai, is particular part pe hum kya dekh rahe? Is particular part pe it seems the chromosomes or the non-sister chromatids of these two homologous chromosomes, they still appear to be joined, giving rise to an X-shaped structure. So, this particular X-shaped structure, ban hai, this is called to be the chiasmata. The appearance of chiasmata is a characteristic feature of diplotin. So, going by that, question number 112, the correct answer is going to be option B, chiasmata. Question number 113, again statement based question are I. Consider the following statements and choose the correct option. Statement 1 bold rahe hai, most minerals enter the root by active transport. So mineral absorption in both the chapters, transport in plants and mineral nutrition, dono mein humne ye point dekha hai that minerals ka jo absorption ya uptake ho raha hai, it's mostly going to be through active absorption. So, statement 1 is correct. Statement 2, minerals are present in the soil are ions. So, this version mein minerals soil mein available ho rahe, they are mostly in the form of charged particles. Going by that, statement 2, ye ion wala point bhi correct ho rahe. So, both statements 1 and 2 are true. So, going by that, question 113, the correct answer is option C. Question number 114. Proton gradient in chloroplast is broken due to? This particular question is related to the chemiosmotic hypothesis which explains ATP and NADPH2 formation during photosynthesis. So, what we study in that particular hypothesis is that you have the presence of a membrane. In case of chloroplast, who is this membrane? That is the thylakoid membrane. Now, Thylakoid membrane ke andar ka jo ye area is the enclosed kiya hai, that is the lumen. Aur ye bahar ka jo bhi area reh raha hai, this is the entire stroma. So, during the chemiosmotic hypothesis of chloroplast, what we see is accumulation of proton. This accumulation of protons is going to occur in the lumen. Photolysis of water lumen ke andar ho raha hai. Initially, stroma mein jo bhi protons present hai, Unko bhi humne lumen ke andar pump karaya hai yaha pe. So give and take, at the end what we are seeing is, how do you establish the proton gradient? You have high concentration of protons in the lumen 
and you have low concentration of proton in the stroma. This is the maintenance of the gradient. Abhi gradient maintained hai. Question mein humse poochha ja raha hai that how do you break this gradient? So you have high concentration in the lumen and you have low concentration in the stroma. So chemiosmotic hypothesis ye bata raha hai ki ye jo proton gradient hai. To break this we are going to move protons from a region of high concentration to a region of low concentration. So, this means the proton ka movement is It's from the lumen to the stroma. So, proton gradient ko break karne ki baat ho rahi hai. So, it should be movement of protons, options B and D. Exactly kis direction mein? Lumen to stroma. So, going by that, movement of protons from lumen to stroma, question 114, the answer should be option B. Now, for question number 115, a graph that plots the effect of different wavelengths of light on the rate of photosynthesis is called this particular representation. This is called to be the action spectrum of photosynthesis. So question 115, the correct answer is option B. Question number 116, sunlight is essential for photosynthesis in plants was concluded by so the series of experiments which basically gave us ideas about all the raw materials needed for photosynthesis and the resultant effects. So we had multiple scientists involved over there. So Jan Ingenhoes was the person who first gave the idea that photosynthesis is properly occurring in the presence of sunlight. That sunlight is essential for photosynthesis to occur. So question 116, the answer is option C. Question number 117. It's a match the following between a step of respiratory pathway and the location where it is occurring. So glycolysis, the first step of respiration, that is going to occur in the cytoplasm. TCA cycle, the tricarboxylic acid cycle or the citric acid cycle or also known as Krebs cycle, that is going to occur in the mitochondrial matrix. ETS, the electron transport system, the electron carriers are going to be present on the inner mitochondrial membrane. So ETS A. So going by that 1 C 2 B 3 A. The correct answer for 117 is option B. Question 118. In mitochondrial ETS, which of the following acts as final electron acceptor? So when we study aerobic respiration, we know that it is requiring oxygen as a participant. But in pure aerobic respiration, mein, the exact part where oxygen is utilized is at the very last step, which is during ETS. So during mitochondrial ETS, whatever electron carriers are required, they are present on the inner mitochondrial membrane. Electrons are moving from one carrier to the next one, complex one, complex two, as a move. Kar rahe. Eventually, what we observe is, let it be the electrons of any radiation equivalent, which is terminal or final electron acceptor, hoga, that is going to be oxygen. So that is exactly where in aerobic respiration, we have the requirement of oxygen, who behaves as the final or terminal electron acceptor. So question 118, the correct answer is option A. Question 119, you have to match the type of oxygen, if it's natural or synthetic, with an example. So, natural oxygens usme kaun hai? IAA, indole-3-acetic acid and IBA, indole-3-butyric acid. So, unke codes kya hai? A and C. Synthetic oxygen ka example ho raha hai NAA, naphthalene acetic acid, jis ka code hai B and 2,4-D, 2,4-dichlorophenoxy acetic acid. So, agar hum isko match kare, so 1AC2BD. So question 119, the correct answer is option C. Question 120 is regarding abscisic acid and what effects it can show in the plant body. So abscisic acid inhibits seed germination. This point is correct. Abscisic acid can overcome the effects of gibberellins and result in blocking seed germination. Stimulates closure of stomata. It is called to be the stress hormone because under water stress conditions, ye stomata ko close kara hai. Option C mein bola hai, induces seed dormancy. Dormancy is that state when the seed is unable to germinate. So option A mein humne already dekha hai ki wo actually seed germination ko block kar hai. So another way of looking at that statement is, 
if I say it inhibits seed germination, I can also say that it promotes or induces seed dormancy. So option A ke saath relate ho ke option C bhi correct ho raha hai. So going by that, all the three A, B, C they are correct. Hence, question 120, abscisic acid ke properties kya ho raha hai? All of the above. Hence, option D. Question 121, egg apparatus in the embryo sac, what is the egg apparatus consisting of? It contains two synergids and along with those two synergids, we have the presence of a single egg cell. So question 121, option C. Question number 122, thalamus contributes in fruit formation of, to pseudocarpic fruits ke development mein ye point aa hai. So apple, strawberry, cashew nut, for all three of them, it is the thalamus who is contributing in the fruit development. Hence, all of these, question number 122, the correct answer is option D. Question number 123, the morphological nature of edible part of coconut. So coconut ka jo water ho hai, the coconut water or let it be the white flesh or kernel of the coconut. Dono hi uske edible portion ho hai. Now both the coconut water and the white kernel of the coconut, they are actually representing endosperm. Coconut water is representing free nuclear endosperm. Coconut kernel is representing cellular endosperm. But at the end of the day, coconut ka jo actual edible part or let it be the liquid or the white portion, both are represented by its endosperm. So morphological nature kya ho hai? Option B, endosperm. Question 124, choose the incorrect pair with respect to sex determination. So grasshoppers ki case mein XXXO type, this is correct. Birds, ZZZW type, this is correct. Fruit fly, XXXO type. Fruit flies do not have XO type. Fruit flies have a determination mechanism which is a bit similar to humans. Option D humans, XXXY type, fruit fly may be aisa hi system ho raha So hume yaha pe poochha hai incorrect pair. So fruit fly does not have XXXO type. So going by that, question 124, the answer should be option C. Question number 125, which of the following are chromosomal disorders? Color blindness, phenylketonuria, thalassemia. Three of these, they are actually Mendelian disorders. They are defects occurring in the exact gene. But Down syndrome and Turner syndrome, these are defects with respect to chromosome numbers. Down syndrome, that is also called to be trisomy 21 because there is an extra copy of chromosome 21. In Turner syndrome, what is happening? Turner syndrome is affecting females. Instead of XX, the affected female is going to have an XO condition. It is a missing X chromosome there. So going by that, Down syndrome and Turner syndrome, these are the actual chromosomal disorders here. So two and five. So question number 125, the correct option is option D. Question 126. Beta thalassemia in humans is controlled by thalassemia, this particular gene disorder which is actually affecting blood. It's a blood related disorder. So, there are two types of thalassemia A, alpha thalassemia and B, beta thalassemia. So, beta thalassemia is controlled by a single gene which is called to be the HBB gene. Whereas, alpha thalassemia is controlled by two genes, HPA1 and HPA2. So we have one gene which is HBB. This gene is exactly located on human chromosome number 11. So option B, HBB gene on chromosome 11. Question number 126 ka answer hoga B. Question number 127. A man with blood group AB. So the male parent has blood group AB. Hum immediately iska genotype bhi dekh rahe hai. IA, IB marries a woman with blood group O. So the blood group O ho hai, to iska genotype ho hai, small i, small i. The possible blood group of their offsprings. Kya possible blood groups ho sakte hai inke offsprings ke? So for the male parent, the two possible types of gametes are these two. For the female parent, a ki possible type ka gamet ho hai, this one. Now when you combine inke offsprings ka a possible genotype ho hai, IA small i, which will give us a phenotype of 
A. Another possible genotype combination of their offsprings is IB small i which gives us the phenotype B. So, this means for these two people whatever offsprings they have there is a chance of having blood group either A or B. So, A and B are both possible. Ho it's not possible that their offsprings will have the blood groups of either of the parent. A B combination hone ka koi chance nahi ho rahe. O combination hone ka bhi chance nahi ho rahe. So parents wala blood group offspring me hume yaha pe dekhne ko nahi mil raha hai. Right. So going by that, sirf A ya fir B possible ho rahe. So 127 A B. Yahi dono possible hai. Question 127. The correct answer is option D. Question number 128. Again assertion reason question. Assertion is me ho rahe that the general Tick code is degenerate. This particular statement is true. Reason is me bol rahe that most amino acids are coded by more than one codon. Ye particular statement be true ho rahe because jitne humare paas amino acid code karne ke liye hai, usse kahi zada hi humare paas codons available hai. So we do have this possibility that a particular amino acid is coded by multiple codons. So ye statement be true ho rahe. Now, why are we calling the genetic code to be degenerate? Ye jo word degenerate usko diya gaya hai, it is because that multiple codons are responsible for a single amino acid. Because of this particular reason, we usko degenerate bola hai. So, it seems reason is correctly explaining the assertion. So, going by that, question number 128, the correct answer should be option A. Question number 129. Southern blotting technique involves transfer of DNA. So, blotting ke technique mein hum kya kar rahe? Hum ek point A se point B mein jo bhi DNA hai, usko transfer kar rahe. So, southern blotting ke technique mein DNA ka exact transfer kaha se ho rahe? DNA originally hum ne kaha separate kiya hai? We have separated it in the agarose gel. So, DNA gel mein present hai. From the gel, during blotting, we are going to transfer it to a membrane. A nitrocellulose membrane is commonly used. So, transfer ho hai from gel to membrane. Aage ek bar membrane mein transfer ho gaya. After that, we can add probes and further go ahead with the steps of DNA fingerprinting. So, the exact step is from gel to membrane. So, going by that, question number 129, the answer is option A. Question number 130. The number of regulatory and structural genes present in lac operon. Lac operon may a regulatory gene present ho hai, which is I gene. I gene which is eventually going to code for the repressor protein. So regulatory gene kitna ho hai? one. This one regulatory gene aage wo kin ko control kar hai? It's going to control three structural genes. The Z gene which is responsible for the enzyme beta galactosidase, the Y gene which is responsible for the enzyme permease and the A gene which is responsible for the enzyme transacetylase. So it seems we have the presence of one regulatory gene and three structural genes. So going by that question number 130 the correct answer should be option B 1 and 3. Question number 131. For initiation of translation, the ribosomes bind to. Ribosomes kis ke saath bind karega? Just ke paas protein banane ke liye information present hai. Who is carrying the message? So that is nothing but the mRNA. So blank 1 is the mRNA who is carrying the message. At the start codon. And dash is recognized. When you are trying to initiate translation, to initiation kab shuru hoga yaha pe? Recognition kiska required hai? The start codon. So going by that, blank 2 con ho hai? Start codon and the start codon is nothing but AUG. AUG is recognized by the. So jo bhi codons ka recognition ho hai? mRNA mein whatever codons are present, inko recognize kon karega? tRNA. So going by that, number 3, it should be tRNA. Lekin ab agar tum options dekho, Options A and B, mRNA, AOG, itna sahi hai. Lekin, three mein dekho, ek mein aans, aara hai option tRNA, ek mein aara hai initiator tRNA. So now what we are seeing here is something very precise. 
So we know that AOG is recognized by tRNA, but the exact tRNA who is going to recognize AOG, who is carrying methionine at its site, what we can say is, ये जो tRNA है, जो methionine carry करके ला रहा है, AOG को recognize कर रहा है, that is actually beginning or initiating the process of translation. तो उस met tRNA को, the methionine carrying tRNA, उसको हम क्या बोलते हैं? Initiator tRNA. So now our point became precise that instead of just saying tRNA, we are using the exact term initiator tRNA. So going by that, question number 131, the correct answer should be option A. Keep this in mind. In dono options, there is a very difference. Hai. Saying initiator tRNA and tRNA is going to mean different things. So 131, the answer should be A. Question number 132. Browsing of Calotropis by cattle is not observed due to. So it seems Calotropis, this particular plant, has created a defense mechanism which is naturally cattle usko browse or graze. So going by that, what does Calotropis contain? Calotropis actually contains a class of very toxic compounds which are cardiac glycosides. So cattle do not want to consume that cardiac glycosides because it is harmful for them. So going by that, question number 132, the correct answer is option C. Now question number 133, this is a numerical but a very easy numerical. If in a pond there are 20 water hyacinth plants, so the moment you start reading the question, what you are seeing is ki jo bhi water hyacinth ka plant hai, uska initial population kitna ho hai? 20. And eight new plants are added by reproduction. So over a unit time period, the time period is not mentioned. So we are assuming that it is over a unit time period. Eight new plants were added through their natural reproduction. So what we have to find out is the birth rate. So what we know is that there 20 original number present. This is the initial population. In comparison, mein, what is the change that has occurred? How many were added? Eight were added. So this is going to give us a birth rate of 0.4. So simple ye change aara yaha pe. Number of plants added by the initial number of plants present. So 0.4, question number 133, the correct answer is option C. Question number 134, I match the following question. Species area relationship, this was proposed by Alexander von Humboldt. So, D. The rivet popper hypothesis on the other hand, this was proposed by Paul Ulrich. So, A. The earth summit, this was held in Rio de Janeiro. So, B. Number 4. World summit on sustainable development, which was a follow-up of the earth summit, this was held in Johannesburg. So, C. So, using this particular code, 1D, 2A, 3B and 4C. The correct answer should be option D. So 134, option D. Question number 135. The 10% law is related to the 10% law where we are using it. This is basically explaining the way in which energy is transferred from one trophic level to the next trophic level through a food chain. So from subsequent trophic levels, the amount of energy that is available for transfer, that is always 10% of the original amount. So the 10% law is related to energy transfer from lower traffic, trophic level to higher trophic level. So the answer should be option C. Now we are starting section B, question number 136, assertion reason based. Assertion states that 2,4-D is an artificial auxin. This particular statement is true. Reason, 2,4-D is a weedy site. Yes, 2,4-D can be utilized as a weedy site and quickly kills mature monocots. This is where the statement is problematic. 2,4-D is used as a weedy site, but 2,4-D is a selective weedy site which actually targets broad-leaved dicots. It doesn't kill monocots. This particular part of the statement, this is incorrect, making the entire reason incorrect or false. So assertion is true, but reason is false. Question number 136, the answer is option C.
Question number 137. Consider the following features. Which of these are seen in pheophysi? So brown algae se related question. Hai. Statement 1. Chlorophyll A and C. They are present in pheophysi. Correct. Fucosanthin. That is the characteristic pigment which is giving pheophysi its brown color. So this is also correct. Third. Floridian starch. Floridian starch is a stored food, but that is not the stored food in pheophysi. Pheophysi may stored food kya ho Manitol and laminarin, not Floridian starch. So, ye point galat ho hai. Number four, flagella two in number, unequal and lateral. Pheophysi may jo bhi flagella present hoga. They are going to be two in number, they are unequal in length and they are placed laterally. So, ye statement correct ho hai. So it seems out of all of them, the statements which are correct for pheophysi are statements 1, 2, 4. So question number 137, the correct answer is option B. Now question number 138, the cork cambium, cork and secondary cortex are collectively called. These three later form the new outer protective layer of a plant who has shown secondary growth. So these three together are now forming the periderm. So question number 138, correct answer is option B. Question number 139, if the DNA content of a cell is 2C at the end of mitosis, so it means you had the original cell, a parent cell hai, is some amount of DNA present here, we don't know that for now. This particular cell must have underwent S phase, to Jaise hi S phase ho gaya, originally jitna bhi amount tha, usse double ho jayega. After G2 phase complete mitosis, mitosis has occurred and now what I have is the daughter cell. To hume kya pata hai ki original cell mein whatever is the DNA content, let's say the DNA content is some X, C. So whatever is the DNA content in the original cell, mitosis ke baad, DNA ka jo amount hai, content in the daughter cell, that does not change. So going by that, hume haa pe information kya diya hai ki mitosis ke baad daughter cell mein DNA content kitna hai? 2C. So going by that, original jo humara parent cell yaha pe ho raha hai, this parent must have also contained 2C. DNA ka content to same hoga. So question mein humse poochha ja raha hai ki thik S phase ke baad, what is the amount of DNA, the DNA content? So what we know is S phase may because of DNA replication, the content, the amount of DNA doubles. So this is an easy doubling over here. 2C say DNA content 1 gaya, 4C. So what is the amount of DNA at the end of S phase? S phase jaise khatam hua, it would be 4C. So question number 139, the correct answer should be option D, 4C. Now question number 140, the water potential of pure water. So by convention, water potential of pure water is considered to be zero. So going by that, 140, the answer should be option A. 141, the dikaryotic stage of fungi is represented as, what is happening in the dikaryotic phase? Dikaryotic phase ke pehle, we had plasmogamy occurring. Plasmogamy me the protoplasm of the cell, of the two parent cells or the gametes or the reproductive structures have fused. But we haven't yet had karyogamy. So, this means initially N and N. Whatever fungal parent structures were involved, they are coming together. They have performed plasmogamy. So, plasmogamy may protoplasm fuse hua hai, but genetic material fuse nahi hua hai. That is why ye jo structure hai, we cannot call it to be 2N. Diploid here is not yet because genetic material or nucleus ka fusion is not yet. But this structure hai, is how we can represent N plus N in this manner. Now, when karyogamy occur hoga, to jaise hi karyogamy occur ho gaya, then we will have a diploid condition. But this intermediate binucleate condition is is binucleate condition ko after plasmogamy and before karyogamy, this is called to be the dikaryophase or the dikaryotic stage or dikaryotic condition, any word you use. So in this particular condition, the ploidy of the fungal structure is going to be N plus N. So question number 141, 
the correct answer is option C. Question number 142. Medicinal plant belonging to family Fabaceae is. You will notice that all the four options given there, they are medicinal plants, but belonging to different families. Aloe or the common aloe vera that we use, that's a medicinal plant from the family Liliaceae. Ashwagandha and Belladonna, both are members of Solanaceae. Mulethi, that is a member of Fabaceae. So question number 142, the correct answer is option D. Question 143, scientific names are printed in dash and are derived from dash. This is one of the base rules which were given by Linnaeus in his rules of binomial nomenclature. So scientific names are always printed in italics. If you notice aloe, aloe, that is the genus of that plant. Hence, we have written in italics. Mein likha hai. Baki jo bhi common name ho hai, that we have written in the normal font. So, it should be in italics. And all scientific names, either they are directly in Latin or they are derived from Latin. So, italics and Latin. Question number 143. The answer is option B. Question number 144. Soilless culture helps in knowing. Soilless culture, that is hydroponics. Soilless culture helps in knowing Jab tum khud ek nutrient solution design kar rahe ho, where you are studying or growing the plant you can customize what kind of a nutrient solution you are making Let's say you want to study does the plant require magnesium If it requires magnesium it what quantity it requires magnesium If it doesn't get magnesium what symptoms might occur as a result of deficiency If it gets let's say excess of magnesium what kind of symptoms might occur because of toxicity? To koi bhi element, does the plant require that element? In what quantity it requires the element? And if you change that quantity as a result of the deficiency or toxicity of that element, what kind of possible symptoms can occur? All of these things I can easily study if I can control the element which I am adding to that plant Doing this in soil becomes a bit difficult, but doing this in a hydroponics condition, that is easy because we are the ones making the nutrient solution. So we can try to customize it whatever way we want. So going by that, soil dust culture helps in knowing toxicity caused by an element, true. Deficiency symptoms caused by an element, true. Essentiality of an element, true. So one, two, three, all the three statements are correct, all of the above. So question number 144, the correct answer is option D. Question number 145, the area whose tropical rainforests possess the greatest biodiversity on earth is. So this question, mein, just tropical rainforest ki pe baat ho rahi hai, which is actually containing a major portion of the earth's biodiversity, that is nothing but the Amazon rainforests. And where are the Amazon rainforests located? They are located in South America. So question number 145, the correct answer is option B. Question number 146, which of the following is an incorrect match? Lizard showing diapause. Pehla jo option hai, that itself is incorrect. Diapause is a state of suspended development. Lizards do not have suspended development. They do not show diapause. Baki tino jo yahape statements ho bears, they do show hibernation. Bacteria, under unfavorable conditions, they develop thick walled resting spores. Fishes, during summer, they have this summer sleep, which is nothing but astivation. So, hume incorrect pucha gaya hai. Question number 146, the answer is option A. Question number 147, the isotopes used by Hershey and Chase. Hershey and Chase's experiment, it gave the final proof that DNA is the genetic material. So for that particular experiment, they used two radioactive isotopes. They used P32 and S35. These were the two radioactive isotopes. Hence, the correct answer for question number 147, that should be option B. Question number 148, match the following. Pleiotropy, the disease phenylketonuria, the gene which is affected in the disease phenylketonuria, affecting that one gene is actually resulting in multiple or varied symptoms, which gives us the idea that one gene 
मल्टीपल कंडीशन या कैरेक्टर्स को कंट्रोल कर रहा था दिस पर्टिकुलर फिनोमिन वेर वन जीन कंट्रोल मल्टीपल कैरेक्टर्स दिस इज कॉल टू बी प्लियोट्रॉपी सो फिनाइल किटोनोरिया इज एक्चुअली शोइंग प्लियोट्रॉपी सो प्लियोट्रॉपी फिनाइल किटोनोरिया वन डी पॉलीजेनिक इनहेरिटेंस प्लियोट्रॉपी का यू कैन से ऑलमोस्ट ऑपोजिट हो रहा है पॉलीजेनिक इनहेरिटेंस में we have multiple genes and their products interacting in order to control a single character so human skin color the distribution of melanin the production of melanin the human skin color is actually controlled by multiple genes at the same time so polygenic inheritance is controlling human skin color so to see codominance is the phenomenon when we have टू डोमिनेंट अलील्स अलग अलग से इनको हमने इस्टेब्लिश किया है दैट दे आर डोमिनेंट अलील्स बट वेन दीज टू डोमिनेंट अलील्स आर प्रेजेंट टूगेदर बोथ ऑफ दैम आर एबल टू शो देर एक्टिविटी ऐसा नहीं हो रहा है दैट द फर्स्ट डोमिनेंट अलील इज रिप्रेसिंग द अदर वन टू डोमिनेंट अलील्स दे आर एक्सप्रेसिंग टूगेदर सो दे आर डोमिनेंट टूगेदर और को डोमिनेंट सो दिस पर्टिकुलर प्रॉपर्टी इज ऑब्जर्व इन केस ऑफ ए बी ओ ब्लड ग्रुपिंग इन द ब्लड ग्रुप ए बी when a person has the phenotype ab it means ia allele and ib allele both are occurring ia allele ki wajah se a ib allele ki wajah se b so dono condition wahan pe observe ho raha hai that's how we are getting the ab phenotype incomplete dominance is the condition when we have a dominant and a recessive allele jo bhi dominant allele hai wo apne aap ko express kar raha hai recessive allele suppressed hai but this time what is happening the dominant allele is unable to completely express it or let's say 100% express itself so observation mein kya ho raha hai instead of getting the entire dominant trait we get almost an intermediate or a mixed kind of a trait so snapdragon flower color mein red is the dominant color white is the recessive condition but when we have the capital r and small r together in a heterozygous condition according to mendel's law of dominance we should have had red color of the flower but red pigment ka complete expression nahi hone ki wajah se what we are getting is an intermediate pink color so this particular observation of incomplete dominance is seen in snapdragon flower color so going by that if you match the code that comes up is B so question 148 the correct answer is option B question number 149 bio fortified crops are bio fortification ke process mein what is happening we are designing crops we are developing crops in such a manner that the nutritive value the nutrient content vitamins iron minerals that content is going to be increased so bio fortified crops are crops with high nutritive value So question number one forty nine. The correct answer is option D. The last question, question number one fifty. Life begins in all sexually reproducing organisms from a single celled zygote. This is a very easy and direct question. So question number one fifty, option A. So I hope you understood the discussions that we had regarding this particular paper. Good luck for your upcoming exams. <laughs>